Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rory Reed, and we're back as you can see for part two of our how to paint an orange tutorial. So quick overview, showing you a couple clips from the last video here of what we did to get to this point. Got a little five by five, painted it white, sanded it down, and now you're caught up to speed and we're gonna jump right in where we left off in part one, continuing to work on the shadow area of this orange. This now is, you can say, my second layer on this shadow portion side. So we're just using some of that cad red light, the deep violet, and a touch, a small touch of the raw umber, which is the brown color. The dark brown color you see in between the green and the blue there on the palette. So that is what we use for this mixture you're seeing me apply right now. And we're just putting some slight, somewhat soft um, brush strokes over what we already had down before. And this will like fill it out a little bit more, give it a bit more smoothness and uh, take away some of the more transparent areas that are still showing some of the white canvas through. And I'm just bouncing, bouncing from area to area, checking the reference as I go, because as I said, the reference is the roadmap or the guide and I'm using the reference solely for lighting and composition somewhat. So if you look at the reference, you can see that there's a couple leaves attached to the stem. I only included one. Um, and also the shape varies a little bit from what is in the reference photo. But the most important thing we're taking from the photo is the lighting scheme where the light source is, where the highlight is, cast shadows, mid values, that sort of thing. That's what's going to make the orange look real because we're using a realistic reference where everything is already mapped out for us. We don't have to be guessing where the light falls and that sort of thing. So, or trying to invent it ourselves, you know. And like the previous tutorial, I got this um, reference from unsplash.com. That's a place where you can get um, free to use images. If I can find it um, back on the site, I'll link it in the description, but I was looking for it the other day and I uh, wasn't able to run back into it, so i um, not sure if I'll be able to link it uh, in the future, but I'll, I'll double check again before I post this part and um, you'll be able to see it uh, if I can find it. If not, it's here in the video, so you can just use um, the reference here. And from the shadow color that's in the brush, I'm just using the orange mixture that we mixed at the start to lighten it up a bit to go a little bit more into the this mid-tone area now. And the reason I'm lightening it up is to try to get um, an in-between value to sort of blend out that harsh line between the darkest shadows and the um, mid um, tones or the mid range values. Trying to just get a transitional value in between there to erase or blur that line out a bit. And so it takes some um, trial and errors. You know, if you mix something and you put it on the canvas, you see it doesn't work, just go back to the palette and mix it again. You either need to go lighter or darker, you need to increase the saturation, decrease the saturation, that sort of thing. So once you have those fundamentals down, maybe I'll even make a video on that in the future. You know, that's how you use the palette to work to for your benefit. You have the colors you're using, you have a way to lighten them, you have a way to darken them, in other words, change the value, and you also have a way to saturate them, which is, you know, keeping the color pigment at its full potential, or to desaturate them, which is to like, you know, gray them out a little bit. Usually if you, you um, want to add a bit more atmosphere, you like desaturate the backgrounds of your um, 
paintings or if you want to put emphasis on your subject matter, you desaturate the things around it and just leave the focal point of your um, painting fully saturated, that sort of thing. Those are different, um, you know, more advanced elements you can go into, color theory, that sort of thing. So not so much, you don't have to worry about it so much now if you're a beginning or, you know, relatively intermediate painter. And so this is what we're doing, like I said before, we're just mixing transitional values and trying to smooth things out so that our harsh lines from our blocking stage is not as pronounced. And once we get that done accurately, um, we will, you know, have a more realistic looking orange here. And I'm still using the flat brush now. It's a smaller flat brush, but once I get a little bit closer towards the end, we're going to be using like either a round brush or a filbert brush, um, clean brush to even smooth this out uh, a bit more. I'm going to be spraying the canvas with water and then using a clean brush to blend out these harsh lines even more than we um, are doing now. This is just a, a prelim or a setup for that, uh, really. Grabbing some more deep violet now, some raw umber more deep violet here and mixing that in with our initial um, orange value testing it on the canvas now to see if it's having a, an effect I'm gonna add some cad red light straight from the tube there that's that top value or the value of uh, the color at the top of the palette there and testing it again and this works a bit more now you can see just going left to right up to down over that line putting in a nice little transition to blur it out a bit and this is um varying a bit from the reference photo. I wanted to, this painting to be super um, colorful. So instead of using a muted orange for the shadow areas or a more brown, brownish orange, I guess orange is just really, or you know, brown is just dark orange. Instead of using that, like you see in the reference photo, I'm using here in the shadows more purples and reds just to keep things super vibrant. You couple those in with the pink slash lavender background and you know you got a nice colorful piece going. Here we have the clean um, brush now that we're just using to blend. Switch back to our brush with the paint on it, going over, applying thin layers of paint into these transitional areas here. And then we're blending those out with the clean brush here, as you can see, getting close to the edge as, po as close to the edge as possible. Because as we said before, we want to leave just a thin layer of that dark value on the edge, almost unnoticeable. Yeah. 
using this transitional value as well now to add some layers to the, uh, the dip at the top and also our the top area here as you can see from the reference photo as well is a touch darker our light source is a bit more towards the front of the orange and so we're gonna try to have that reflected in the actual painting as much as possible it doesn't have to be exact as I said before once you follow a general lighting scheme with a reference photo from real life or if you're doing like a actual real life still life painting you know getting things in the general vicinity is good enough you're, you're gonna have a painting that's still top-notch or high quality perfectionism is you know one of the things I'm realizing is somewhat of a big hindrance in terms of progressing as an order an artist it sort of holds you back instead of going for perfection I suggest this is something I'm even doing myself now is going more for consistency meaning painting a lot of paintings at a average to semi pro level instead of painting one painting at a super super perfectionist high level you're gonna grow as an artist a lot faster if you take the previous route which is just doing a lot of paintings at a very good level or even a average level even that will help you a lot more than just sitting on one painting for two three months and there's all types of benefits that come from that you got more um, work if you're interested in selling that you have more work to sell you have more um, footage and content for social media that you can post that'll grow you your audience you know over time and you know that's always a good thing working now again trying to define some of these shapes a bit more this top part was slightly tricky but when you run into something like that you know you just you know use the reference as a guide and uh, try to stay as true to it as possible and things will generally work out in the end if you trust your eyes and just use the reference to get through the tricky spots and what I'm looking for is the value of the shadows to get that rel relatively close and also the shape of the shadows all of that coupled with keeping in mind that the acrylic paint works in layers so I pick my color that's true from the palette put it on the canvas it may not be reflected um, accurately when I, on my first or second layer once I get to my third or fourth layer the actual color will show up and I need to keep that in mind while I'm painting because if I don't and I just go with my eyes alone it may lead me astray I need to know that I mixed an accurate color on the palette and that when I put it on the canvas initially it may not be reflected as it was on the palette or it may not show up as it was on the palette but um with some additional layers of the same exact mixture the same exact color it will start to show its true um, value and true color and as you can see with a little bit of work it's already cleaned up a lot more and we'll still you know revisit it over and over again wanted to keep this painting as a somewhat tight and somewhat loose 
you'll see what I mean when we get to the end. I love when um, there are areas of the painting that are rendered out fully and they serve as a nice contrast with areas of the painting that aren't rendered out fully. You know, it um, sort of hones your focus on the important parts of the piece, helps with the storytelling aspect. We mix a little bit darker value now for the background. Dropping that in. I think we're just testing at this point. Still relatively early. We're about, I'd say, coming up on midway now. And um, still a decent time to uh, try some things out, you know. This was the shadow portion of the painting, so I was just testing out how a darker value would play into this um, shadow portion. Grabbing now some of the true background color that we used at the start and just going over what we just did a bit. So when this color and the darker color we put on initially mix, we'll have like a slight drop in value. Something that the eye can uh, pick up and, um, you know, would add a bit of variety to the background areas. Might need to change the uh, camera angle in the future as I can see my hand getting in the way when it's on the left side here. So um, I'll look into shifting the camera slightly left. Just a little, I think just a little bit will do um, for the uh, future tutorials. I already have a few recorded though, so when I say future, I mean maybe three or four pieces down the line. <laughs> using the background color now to just clean up the edges. And as you can see there on the left side, it kind of worked. That dark value is still showing through a little bit, so it gives a slight variation. Nothing special. Might even remove it later on, but we leave it there for now to see, you know, see if it grows on us or not. Grabbing some of our shadow color mixture that we had before now, which was Cad Red Light deep violet and raw umber just grab some more deep violet and a touch of raw umber here the deep violet and the raw umber are pretty strong especially the raw umber so when you're doing mixes trying to drop values you just want to do the smallest drop on the brush and then test it to see how it looks and just gradually drop the value like that don't just take a chunk and drop it in, you know, you'll mess up all your mixes that way. You want to go gradually. So now this is the third layer into this shadow region. And um, as you can see, it's looking a lot more filled out, a lot more fleshed out. Textured and smooth. And now we use that same color and we're gonna round out the shape, correct any previous, the previous mistake we made with um, drawing the, the shape of the orange out. So we're just rounding it out now. That's the beauty about working with paint. You don't have to erase anything, you just fix it with paint. 
that line at the top there is looking a little bit better that we just touched and we're gonna just um, round out a little bit down at the bottom as well just testing things here again that shadow is looking kind of crazy so we just threw some of that um, shadow color down placeholder again just to see what it looks like If we like it, we keep it. If not, we fix it. Again, we're grabbing the background lavender color. And just this edge that's next to the light source we're going to try to keep that a little bit sharper than normal and you know to do so sometimes i work from the background side of things or sometimes i'll work from the orange side of things itself to um, refine those lines or to refine that edge Grab in some lighter value now of the orange. Some of our mid-tone value, I'd, I'd call it. Give the can, uh, the palette a couple sprays there to keep it uh, moist. And now we're going to go in once again, test our color. It's a little bit too bright. Drop down the value and then revisit the, the uh, painting. And then we're just going to drop these brush strokes in here. Double checking it against the reference as always. Looks to be uh, what we just applied was looks to be in the correct vicinity. And so now because we're on our third layer or fourth layer now now we're trying to um, hone in on the correct values a bit more Still have uh, work to do on the, the stem and leaf as well, so since that's not too important, we can, we do have the option to just leave that in a bit of an abstract form or a less rendered form. But we are going to, you know, revisit it uh, uh, one or two more times before the piece is done to get it to look a little bit better than where it is now. Cleaning up the palette a bit here now, just scraping off some of the drier areas on the palette. And getting some more space so that we can continue our journey here. Right, so we're grabbing some of our orange. And some cad red light there as well. The cad red light out of the tube is slightly darker in value, so 
we can use it to drop down our mixture, our orange mixture, a tad bit. Keeping in mind, this is going to take it um, over onto the red side a bit more too, so don't use too much. But in this shadow area, as we mentioned before, we did keep it rather red as opposed to brown. So for this particular painting, it, it works. Doing the same thing again because I wasn't happy with where it was, so we're working in this transitional area as again, trying to blur out these transitional lines. If you check the reference photo, that line from the left of the orange in the dark, darkest uh, shadow area to the mid tone or the middle value stripe that goes down the middle that's you know sort of a seamless transition almost so we're trying to duplicate that just a tad not gonna get it exact of course because we are using a more reddish color here so we're just trying to get the values in the ballpark of the reference Got some of our lighter value now, and um, we're going to set up the foundation for our brightest highlighted area that you can see on the reference photo. So we're just working a little bit around that area now, trying to blend or transition into that brightest highlight. Everything, uh, all the brush strokes still are showing up a bit, still kind of rough. So we're just dropping these paint layers on. And once we get to our uh, detailing and smoothing um, portion of the painting, all of this will like come together and make sense. Went as far now as well to even use a liner brush to um, refine the edge a bit. on the light source side of the orange might not have been necessary but again when you're painting you try different things um, and yeah I'm not mad at how it looks relatively decent Doing some work at the top as well with the original orange mixture. Just trying to keep that shape of that little triangular area at the top. And as you can see, this lighter value extends pretty much all the way up to the top here. So we're just trying to suggest that or get that on the painting as well. Now there are, um, if you look at the reference folder, there are certain divots and uh, like a textured look to the orange peel or the orange skin. Uh, I suggested a little bit I believe I started to do it um, later on but 
decided that I wanted to keep this uh, tutorial relatively short so I didn't go into full detail on that but we did make some suggestions on that and then I also used our layering system to leave some of those darker value brush strokes in there to sort of imply the different divots as well you can see it right now on the mid-tone area going into the shadow area a bit there's different values speaking to each other that sort of give that um, textured look not refined as of yet but you can still make it work you don't have to go full-on hyper realism to get this look you can just do a little bit and you know make suggestions to the viewer with your value changes and their brains will put things together so as long as someone looks at it and says this is an orange you're good to go you've accomplished your job so to speak Revisiting the cast shadow once more. <laughs> I think we've we've changed it probably three times already now, but uh, that's the life of uh, a painter, man. I think it was a little too dark before, so I think now I'm trying to blend in some of the background color in with some of that um, deep violet cad red light mixture that we had before seeing how that plays with each other and then here we just try to use some straight up cad red light <laughs> to just get weird you know So we cleaned our little flat brush out now, grabbing some more of our orange color. This is sort of the middle middle ground color. And it's a little bit lighter than what we have in this area so far, so I'm just applying thin layers of it to sort of pull that dark layer up a bit to make the orange look a bit more full. And hopefully by now you can get a good idea of how I'm using the palette. I mixed four values of that orange to begin with. I had a middle value, a base value on the on the left side there, and a value that was slightly lighter, then another value that was slightly lighter, and then our highlight value as well. So I got the base value, a couple mid-tones in between the base value and the lightest value that I have mixed on the palette and then as you saw I mixed my shadow colors as I went along so I can quickly lighten or darken that orange base from simply just grabbing whatever value I need on the palette itself and mixing a little bit of it it into what I have on the brush already 
And when you layer and layer and layer, you get a nice end result. That was a clean brush that I was using to just do a bit of blending, applying some more thin layers of paint here. We've transitioned past the halfway mark now. Now we're, we're trying to um, refine things, clean things up, de add some detailing, stretch our um, contrast out a bit, make our dark slightly darker. I love where it, it was now. And then we're making our highlights and lighter value areas slightly lighter to get like a nice spectrum. And now you see we grab some of our lightest value that we've mixed so far. And we're gonna just rock our brush back and forth to sort of mimic that highlight on the orange itself. Still gonna go a little bit lighter towards the end and trace with a use a fine liner brush to um, go over some of these markings with an even lighter value just to make it pop a little bit more. Grab some of our green color now. I believe what we had on the palette was like a hooker's green. I'm gonna hit that with some raw umber, some yellow ochre, a little bit of that cad yellow deep hue. Trying to get the more yellowish green value that we have in the reference photo for the leaves. Sort of, sort of yellowish or brownish dead looking kind of color so that's what we we were attempting to mix here again doesn't got to be exact but get it in the ballpark and it will read well either way either it's going to look a little bit older than the reference photo or a little bit younger <laughs> depending on how your mix turns out you know And as you can see, I'm just doing stuff that is in the general vicinity of the reference photo. Not copying it exactly, I'm just gathering where the light falls, where the mid midtones are, and where the shadows are. And doing a good guesstimate um, when applying it to the canvas because still still going to read well either way so added some new color and values to the leaf and we're uh, one step closer to making that look decent using a small uh, round brush now 
to just chisel out the shape of the stem a little bit more. Loaded the brush up with the background color and we're using that now to just re or tighten up the shape a bit. Looking good, looking good. Clean brush here to just blend that out. And as you can see, when I'm applying this background color here, how it appears slightly lighter than the background color that's already on the canvas. That's of course because the acrylic paint dries one stop or one value lower than what it is when you applied it. So when it's wet, it looks a certain way. When it dries, it looks slightly darker. So you also have to account for that when you're using acrylic paints. Now, when you varnish your painting at the end, it will generally bump up the brightness back a little bit um, closer to what it looked like when you painted it. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. Trying to define now some of these grooves and divots a bit more. Again, general ballpark area of what's on the reference photo. Not trying to do it exactly. Mixing in a little bit uh, raw umber now as well. Trying to um, get our shadows on the leaf a little bit darker, closer to the reference photo. I think it looks pretty good, pretty decent so far. Using the small round brushes not as well now just to drop some suggestive marks in there. Redefining the shadows on the um, stem itself. Put a little bit of orange on the same exact brush now to um, sort of erase or dim down this uh, groove that we established before to indicate that it's fading out a little bit towards the outer edge of the orange. And again, just want to take this time to ask you guys and remind you guys to like and subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know, when you like the videos, um, YouTube, the algor algorithm uh, helps us out by giving us a little push so that more people can see the videos. And, you know, for every content creator out there, growing the channel is the ultimate goal to reach a wider audience. So. Would appreciate if you guys hit that like if you enjoy these tutorials and also if it's not too much trouble remember to subscribe all right back to work got a smaller brush now and we're gonna try to go in and 
work on the shadow areas here at the top of the orange. The flat brushes weren't quite getting it, so now we, you know, use a smaller brush in this detailing phase to sort of get some of the shapes more defined. And we're using this as well to just drop in some of these random divots in the texture of the orange skin. Just doing them at random, just a darker value, some of that shadow color that we used. By the time we get to the end of the piece, um, with a, a few layers of the, um, f a few like a transparent layers of the midtone and highlighted colors, these will look a bit more natural than they do right now. So this is sort of a setup um, play we're doing here. Dropping them in, they look a little bit too dark. Once we add in some future layers. Because at this point we're just doing very thin, almost transparent or translucent layers. Stacking those on top of each other as we go. And that will bring us home to make this piece look, you know, amazing by the time we get done. So we added a few of those divots uh, there, as you can see, because in the orange itself, though they were more pronounced in that area there. So we just indicated them slightly. Of course, didn't try to match it exactly. We just dropped some random ones in. Whoever's looking at the piece will get the picture. There is one of the times we hit the canvas now with a spray of water. We did a couple sprays, I believe. And this is going to allow us to just blend out and smooth out a lot of these divots. And as you can see, the, when the water hit the paint, it sort of brought up the real vibrance that we will be able to notice as well when we varnish the piece at the end. So the spray bottle is a good way for you to get a preview of what the piece is going to look like once it's completed and varnished. You know, you can check your saturations and things like that by using the spray bottle. Because when the all the moisture from the paint is dried out of the canvas it like I said it does dry a bit darker and looks a little bit less saturated than it normally would mixed up some um, yellow Okinawa with the green mixture that we had before just indicating the lighter values that we see on the Leafs reference photo as well. And again, we're just going to suggest that in, not going to try to get anything too exact here. Grabbing a little bit of orange now too, putting that into our brush with the yellow ochre mixture. Looks like we're darkening it down a bit with the green there on the palette. And we're going to indicate or drop these in in some of the transitional areas of the leaf. Grabbing some burnt umber now, or raw umber, I should say, not burnt umber. And using this as well to drop the overall value down of this green mixture. Yeah. 
indicating some of the shadows uh, once again. And that's kind of where we are with the painting, you know, it's all the major components are already completed. Now it's just a matter of refining everything and rendering everything out. And you could essentially call this the detailing phase. And this phase you can literally take as long as you want. You can spend a whole damn week doing this detail phase if you like. And you know, you can push the painting to be as realistic as you can possibly get it. That's up to you to decide as an artist, you know, where do you want to stop and how do you want things to be portrayed. Me, I like a hint of realism, like I like to go beyond what is standard and at the same time leave things on the shadow side a bit loose, a, a bit more unrendered. That's just my style that I use, that I like. So you know when people look at one of my paintings on the sides or portions that I render out, they're like, oh wow, is that a painting? And then when they look at the less rendered uh, portions, it reminds them, oh yes, it is a painting. I may have stated it before, but I'm not the greatest fan of the hyper-realism stuff. I do like it. It is a great exercise in skill and uh, discipline and patience. But as for the magic of art and, you know, looking at something cool that is purely from like an, an imaginative standpoint, I think when you see the brush strokes or, you know, unnatural colors, things of that nature, it um, puts a little bit more mm on your uh, on your pieces I am from the uh, Tampa area so you know I guess that that was an influence on me I got from when I visited the Salvador Dali museums in my younger years so that's probably why I have that view because a lot of his stuff is surreal some of his stuff has realism aspects with surreal um, subject matter. And a lot of his earlier stuff was just, you know, sort of out there. Out there with the color, out there with the subject matter, out there with the, the figurative um, things, or I don't even know what to call it, the figurative... Um, images that he would instill in the uh, in the painting. So when you look at them, especially as a younger person, you know you, your mind starts to run wild. So I guess that always stuck with me. Grabbing some orange now as well, dropping it back into the muddy area that is the shadow or the cast shadow <laughs> safe to say that that didn't work yet so we're still gonna work it there's still time there's still time before we get done with this piece to uh try something else under there <laughs> if you were um and actually that's a good uh teaching point a good lesson if you were using sort of a standard still life um, piece it would be much easier to um, you know denote or denote this um, cast shadow because you'll just use your shadow color from the orange and then the shadow color of whatever surface the orange would be sitting on then you sort of mash those two or interplay those two together underneath here um, 
but for this one we have this sort of lavender background and the orange is kind of floating in space if you will like you know the shadow kills that idea but you know you kind of have room to guess and as you as you've seen throughout this painting so far this is what happens when you guess you try it it doesn't work you try it again it doesn't work try it again it doesn't work eventually you'll settle on something you like now that may sound cool but if you are you know have a deadline to meet or something like that that could be problematic because you're left in a guessing game and changing things take time so you also don't want to you know be left out there without a roadmap so using some of these mid-tone and shadow colors now to drop some abstractions in sort of pulling the orange fruit itself off the canvas to the left here and we're going to do something similar on the right you know just to give the this was like i said a, a five by five piece so not much we could do in terms of um, leading the eye but i think these few abstractions does, does a great job on the far left of the canvas this brushstroke leads your eye to the orange and, and then on the right i'm going to add another one that leads your eye off the canvas and there it is we use just some of the lighter value orange that we had before and we just make a nice brush stroke to indicate that leading line there that cast shadow shadow is uh, stupid ugly but uh, you know it's growing on me now I might just leave it there <laughs> I'm sort of liking the awkwardness I'm just cleaning the brush off now and going over this same brush stroke over and over again to sort of remove some of the paint because I want a little bit of the background color to pop through. Don't want a real solid orange brush stroke there. Just want, you know, the shape, some orange, and then some of that lavender background. To show through mixing up some colors now to tackle the leaf once again we grabbed our hookers green cad yellow deep hue and yellow ochre and a slight touch of raw umber as well putting some abstractions in for this leaf also just keeping things interesting giving your eye something else to look at uh, other than the focal point which is the orange itself like I said, this was just a fun piece, so just keeping things fun, trying new things, seeing where we end up. I was contemplating putting this green somewhere else. Wasn't sure that I liked it though. So yeah, we just wet our paper towel and ended up uh, removing that. One of the benefits there of uh, using acrylic paint, that background is decently set in so far as, you know, as far as drying time is concerned. So we're able to wipe top layers off of any new paint uh, 
brush strokes that we apply. So that's one of the benefits of using acrylic over oil paints, I would say. Now you, you still can use um, this technique for oil paints, but you know, you're going to have a much longer drying time in between layers. Whereas with acrylic, as you see, I'm on the same painting session and it can be done. Just using our background color here again and um, going over some things. Chopping into the actual form of the orange a tad bit, as you can see here. Brush strokes like that um, sort of place the orange in this lavender atmosphere. Breaking that edge line there. I think it looks cool. You know, instead of it sitting on this lavender background, it's now in this lavender room, just with those couple brush strokes. All right, we're fighting against the shadow, <laughs> the cast shadow again, around what, five is this? Let's go. Let's go, shadow. Okay, we grab deep violet and then raw umber there. And I think what I was thinking here is just doing a darker, towards the outer edge of the cast shadow, we just wanted a darker value of the background color. So I think that's what this is. If any of you out there do um, this tutorial, send it to me on uh, Instagram, man, and let me see <laughs> how your shadow is looking. Maybe I can learn something from you. Decided to get funky there and drop some uh, random orange strokes. Jumping out of this cast shadow as well, because why not? You know, some of the orange color from the actual orange jumped off and landed on the cast shadow. And that's what you're seeing there make it make sense but in my paintings I like doing stuff like this you know um, I've seen paintings before where they'll use a light source in this way where they sort of bounce the light all over the canvas you know as far like if you're if you have like a night scene and there is a street light, they bounce the color of the street light maybe to an adjacent building or even on the floor or something like that. So with me, I sort of use it in that way sometimes as well, but also sometimes I like to use it in terms of not only light, but in terms of color. Maybe one day I'll even use it in a in a in terms of like saturation bouncing my saturation to different parts of the painting that kind of thing who knows man endless possibilities doing our final touches here on the leaf Again, we're not getting this leaf too detailed. The important part of the painting is already complete, which is our focal point in the orange itself. This leaf is just a supporting actor, so he doesn't have to be too good.
grabbing some raw umber there and just chopping into this shadow region on the stem slash leaf Unit using our liner brush to apply like a nice thin layer there going over this center line as well put some indicator of the veins on the leaf there as well sort of threw them in there and used my finger and blurred them out because they're not that important but they're important but they're not that important who cares it's green it's ha it has the shape of a leaf your brain will figure the rest out right And so this um, leaf is probably our last final hurdle. Once we get this to a decent spot, we will consider this painting done. Short and Sweet did this in, I want to say it was maybe an hour 45 minutes or hour 30 minutes. You know, good, good little painting super uh, eye-catching modern contemporary you know you can see someone hanging this in their kitchen somewhere and uh, just still combating this leaf now Grabbing some more raw umber. Just working that fold in the leaf there. Working the shadows once again. And it's the same with every um, portion of the painting, you know. I, I didn't spend that much time on the leaf initially and the stem. So now as we get towards the end, I'm going to have to add that layer to that layer three, that layer four. So it's sort of all aspects of the painting is going to need those multiple layers. Back, the background needs it, focal point, the orange itself needs it, stem and leaf, the uh, supporting actor also is going to need it as well. Uh, using a um, round brush, a small round brush, and um, the background color here now to chop into the shape of the leaf. Just quickly glancing over at the reference as I go, doing a quick guesstimate to get to an area or a point where things will look decent. And so you saw a minute ago there, I added some titanium white 
to the palette and I'm going to be using that to um, mix up our final little highlight color which is going to be the brightest spot that you see there on the reference photo almost in the center shift it a bit to the right and we're going to mix up that value or something close and just use a liner brush to indicate a few marks in the uh, the um, highlighted highlighted area we have already dropped in so far that is going to be the plan But as far as everything else goes, um, happy with where it is. As you can see here, that's um, exactly what we're doing. I'm grabbing some of that um, highlight color that we mixed before. That's slightly toned with the orange color. And mixing that with the titanium white to get this color now, which is slightly off white. I'm going to drop a few of these small lines in here and there and that's going to be good enough to let the audience know that you know this is our highlighted area. We layered this value on top of the pre-existing one that we had on the canvas this whole time. Doing some now on the outer layers. Well, not our leaders, but sort of, um, you know, extended it out a bit so we get a nice spread. Definitely toning it down a bit now, and then I'm going to leave a few of these marks far, far away from the brightest highlight just to um, sort of bring things to a nice place touching them with my finger now to remove any excess paint and dulling them down a bit. Can also spray the canvas and go over them with a clean brush as well to remove some of that brightness even more. Added some water to the brush there to just blend everything out and I think this is where we decided to leave this piece so now we're gonna get into the final images of our piece and here she is beautiful little 5x5 five five canvas I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this uh, piece it's a fun one for me hopefully it's gonna be a fun one for you to learn from and try yourself and uh, you know, if you have any questions, hit me in the description and let me know. Be sure to check out my Teespring store. It's teespring.com slash stores slash Rory Reed Art. Also as well, guys, follow me on all social media. I have all my links down below. I'm on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. And last but not least, be sure to like and subscribe to the video so we can help the channel grow. God bless you all. Until next time, peace.